About the future of World of Warcraft Classic. I don't think the future for World of Warcraft Classic is looking good. But yeah, I will tell you later why. But first of all, we're going to have a look at World of Warcraft Classic in 2023 by Willy. And then I will share my thoughts and what I see happening next for World of Warcraft Classic. In this video, I'll be going over the state of World of Warcraft Classic, what versions of it exist, how you can play them, and how popular they are. Since Classic released in 2019, it's fragmented into several different pathways, aiming to meet the demands of different groups of players. And well, while the most good, current expansion, that being Wrath Classic at the moment, is by far the most popular option, there may be a little more out there for the vanilla enjoyers than you would think at first glance. I'll also do a quick mention for Dragonflight towards the end, since it released not too long ago and thus far is appearing to have much more to it than just a honeymoon phase for many players. So let's start off with the big one, where in the classic world of the vast majority of players are, Wrath Classic. Releasing late 2022, Wrath Classic is currently in its first content phase, that being Naxxramas 25 and 10 Man, I have Eternity, the Obsidian Sanctum, and PvP Season 5. It has undergone some changes compared to the original game, such as having the Looking for Dungeon system removed, instead favouring an approach that players should look to connect with each other through the replacement looking for more interface instead. Also, Wintergrasp is no longer a server-specific event, but for all intents and purposes is a cross realm battleground and as we'll see in a moment That's good. very few servers have any faction balance at the end game so aside from some lag in 120 versus 120 combat this is overall a positive thing as otherwise yeah. there would be very little pvp in winter grasp for many servers yeah because like you have to look at the population and there are already like some servers where like people are complaining they don't have enough people to even do dungeons and stuff so what do you expect? Like, do you really want this area to function or not? Like, if you really want Winter Grasp also to be a thing, like, you need to do it like that. Otherwise, it just won't work. Like, that's just facts. Also worth a mention that nowadays Blizzard are a lot more strict on not letting a server's population get out of hand. In the run-up to Wrath, because it was of becoming crashes? more and more noticeable that players would keep transferring to only ever play on the server that had the largest population for their faction on their region. This was ah. leading to some excessive queuing times and unstable server performance. Eventually, Blizzard added a threshold where a server would become locked and players were unable to create new characters there or transfer to that location. On top of that, a while back a bunch of the dead realms as in only a handful of players dead were consolidated onto ones with healthier populations but if you haven't been on the game in a while your character might be playing on a different realm and it might even have a forced name change on it too in terms of where to play a good reference point is the site ironforge.pro since blizzard doesn't release player numbers this is kind of what we have it tracks player populations via yeah, the number look of at players on arena teams as well as individual raiding characters showing as appearing in warcraft logs but do you guys know what kind of problem i have with this here and with like locking certain uh, servers here like there's one one problem with this like how many active players are there in general that is what is important like i give you guys an example what is if they made it where there can only be about 900 players online in one uh, realm at a time for example and then it gets locked what is from those 900, for example, 800 are like one faction and just 100 the other faction? Like, I don't know, it's like kind of like weird because this also makes it like, like you see here where like one uh, server has purely horde, one has like purely aligned. Like, this is, those numbers, they happen also because it gets locked easily. Like, it's not fully to blame, but it's partially to blame because you know, oh, it's full, you can't make new characters and this and that, right? So, yeah, like you have PvP servers here that are literally PvE servers because you don't have any enemies there. And your, your enemy faction, they will not even make a character there because they have nobody to play with. And if this thing was like way larger, maybe you at least have like the 10 or 20 person of the other faction. And because there are so many people, like 10, 20 per percent of population is still a lot. Like this could be like several hundreds, like six, seven hundred, let's say, hot players on a realm that has like I don't know, maybe 40,000 Alliance players or something. Like, you you get what I mean? Like, it's kind of strange if you have, like, smaller realms. Because you still don't have this kind of connection. Like, yeah, sure, people are sort of social, you could say, in Classic. And like, it's easy to befriend randoms that you meet in-game, right? 
But I still find like way harder to find like groups for, for dungeons or for like open world PvP or anything if the realms they are in, in general like very very small. What if there's only like 100, 200 people online at a time or something, right? And after just like few hundreds it's already locked and you don't even see those few hundreds because they're in different zones than you. Or what if if you do like the the second rate or something and they're at the fourth rate and you don't find people for the second rate, right? Or something like that. So yeah, I don't know if it's good to make the, the realms smaller with the hope that people go on multiple realms and there's no low population anywhere because that just makes everything medium populated and medium populated leads to even more faction imbalance as we see here. Like look at this, it's crazy. Like if you play like on Everlook EU here, German PvE, I mean it's PvE so it doesn't really matter much, but you are a hot player. You're not even six person, you are 5.3% of the population. And there's only like 12,000 what players, 12,778. So you will have a hard time doing dungeons. Like you will be forced to faction change even. So yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of this to be honest. I, I would rather have like big realms and stuff. Just make them less, just give three or four realms and that's it. The issue we have is not that the realms are underpopulated because uh, yeah, everyone is on one realm. The problem is we have too many realms. What is if like so many small realms merge together, right? Where there's just like 100 active players, there are 100 active, there are like 50 active players. Then you suddenly have 250 active players if you merge them. So yeah, like how, how retail soft it is, they made it now where like multiple servers, they share like one sort of phase, right? So you can have like four or five of those realms be actually connected uh, somehow, right? That's why you see those players with like, uh, another server name or something in game of course yeah. this means it can show duplicates if people have many alts but again this is kind of what we have and i think it gives an overall good impression as you can see here though faction balance across all regions isn't too bad on a server by server basis you're more or less just picking alliance or horde nowadays keep in mind that the sucks. top servers are almost certainly I, I don't going like this. to be it's not my vanilla experience. So for europe that'll be gehenis and firemore and for north america i believe benediction and felina but for other servers the status changes quite often Often, and ironforge.pro doesn't always reflect the actual state of which servers are locked. For example, on Europe, as I'm writing this video, only two of them are locked, not half a dozen. The good news is Rafa the Lich King got off to a booming start, with tons of returning what players from all points of the game who experience World of Warcraft's peak sub-count expansion. Ironforge.pro shows the number of characters in Rafa who are actively engaging at endgame as the largest number it's ever been, easily overtaking Classic's old record, which was the launch of Blackwing Lur for several resets in a row now. It's since dropped off quite fast because, well, there's only so much Nax you can take. Blizzard re-releasing Nax nowadays didn't quite have the same appeal as it did back in the original vanilla because a lot more people did Nax 40 during Classic. It's also holiday season, people tend to go away, and there's been a very successful launch for Dragonflight, which we'll talk about later. Phase 2 for Wrath Classic is expected to drop in mid-January. The key feature will be a revamped and pre-nerf Alduar, which is shaping up to be much more in tune with progression raiding than anything we've seen so far. It's actually including a fun raid. Tier 5 and Muru during the Sunwell if you did that. I have been testing this content on the PTR, and for our current gear, many hard mode fights are quite tightly tuned. It should be a lot of fun, and we should see many players returning for this. It is a lot of fun, but one thing I'm wondering, if you want the, the Proto Drakes, like the Iron Proto Drake and stuff from Ulduar, like how hard will it be actually on, on Wrath of the Lich King Classic? Like, I want to get the mount. Like, I want the Iron Proto Drake. Even, like, the rusty one I would be already happy to have, right? But, yeah, how do we get the rusty or the iron one? I think it's going to be really, really tough, right? But I remember, like, those mechanics are, like, really cool. Or this one here with, with, with the Mecha Gnome boss. Nimron is his name, right? Like, this one with Mim Mimiron, sorry, Mimiron is the name. Like with Mimiron was really, really fun. Like I love how they're like those phases where like there's like one machine, you defeat it and the next one joins, then they merge into like this right this robot on wheels thingy and stuff. And there's like this tiny chance to get a mount as well, right? So No wait, this is not from for from Mimiron, it's from the last boss. Yeah, yeah. No, it's from the last boss, I remember now. Like, I haven't done this in ages, guys, so sorry for making some mistakes, but now I remember everything, and yeah, it's from the last uh, boss. 
but I remember those mechanics too well. Like, this is so funny. It has like this hard mode, right? Where you press this one button or something. Wow, I can't wait to do this again. Are quite tightly tuned. It should be a lot of fun, and we should see many players returning for this. One final note for Rap is that up to January 16th, there is a global 50% experience buff to yeah, all activities in the game. So, if finishing off leveling was the thing putting you off getting back into it, well, it's never been faster than it is right now at the moment. Oh, and if you're behind on gear as well, I mean, Rap is the expansion that really started to make catch up gearing incredibly fast. There will even be 10 man tier 7 raiding gear dropping from Dungeons 2. I did a video on it a little while ago if you wanted some more details on that. Right then, that's Wrath. Let's move back one expansion, TBC. Well, unfortunately, this is going to be quite a short section. Blizzard currently do not host any Burning Crusade classic servers in any capacity. But for what Whilst you need of course to Outland Wrath exists on Wrath servers, they're mainly just for leveling. Nobody's going back there and making level 70 raids to do Black Temple again. It seems to me like the demand for this to exist just wasn't there as it was when we were going from classic to TBC. So friendly reminder if you like Wrath a lot to make lots of noise for Wrath error servers when we're getting around the time of ICC. Also Blizzard didn't rule out the possibility of TBC error but for me if it didn't happen as Wrath dropped I just don't really see when it would. That's it for TBC. Let's go back one more time into classic as in vanilla classic where it oh, all began. Dead game. Are people really wanting to play this version of World of Warcraft it's again over dead. Wrath, TBC or even retail as it turns out yes they are you think you do and it turns out that some people actually do so you may have heard of the seasonal class you know what you see this year here like many low level players but guess what not even half of them are going to reach end game and stay around because like when you have like wrath of the lich king classic and you have like the old school classic that means like the people you had in the, the the vanilla classic like the old school one like a large portion for them would play in a wrath of the lich king classic so all your friends you had there like maybe only 30 or 20 percent come comes back and like the 70 80 person moved over to wrath of the lich king classic so even what you see here like if we looked earlier wait we're now at 547 where was this earlier like there were way more people here like, look at this. You can't even read the names anymore. Like, this is Wrath of the Lich King Classic here. And it's not just the boat that's full. Like, you see there, even from coming from here. Like, I'm sorry, but this here, this is a joke in comparison. Like, you can still sort of read the names and stuff. They're not too crowded. And the area, yeah, you could argue it's a bit bigger, but uh, still, like, even if you put them together, you get this small ball only. And there you had like this large ball of people. So I think it's very underpopulated. If I log into it, I see like nobody almost, just a few individual players. So the vanilla classic one is, is dead. Like there's no population almost. Oh, you think you do, and it turns out that some people actually do. So you may have heard of the seasonal classic WoW server. It was launched back in November 2021. The idea behind it was to take vanilla servers and modify them in certain ways to offer a different experience. For seasonal mastery, some of the key changes included a faster content cadence, more experience from questing and elite quests, updated content release schedules, such as making ranking available straight away, as well as the tier 0.5 quest lines and dire mall all being available available from day one. The biggest of all updates however was to raiding encounters, adding extra mechanics and health to the bosses to hopefully increase their depth a little bit more and so they don't just all fall over in one minute. There was yeah. also a removal of well buffs from raiding instances. It got off to a very popular start as fresh servers have a tendency to do but ended up retaining a niche player base who wanted to see classic all the way through once again. As of today the servers are still up but they will functionally close on February 14th. 2023. So all in all there isn't really much point starting on the seasonal servers right now if you want to play classic. The reason that I'm going out of my way to mention them is to let you know that this is something that Blizzard has given a go in the past and I personally think it's something that they will try to do again just not for a little while longer. People are starting to get that classic itch again and as we will see with the era servers the demand for a second seasonal server has been on the rise. But if we look back to the past 
season of mastery released quite near the highly anticipated release of phase two of tbc classic with serpent shrine cavern and tempest keep and nowadays one of the criticisms which more or less everybody lays on season of mastery was the timing when it came out conflicting with the live version of classic and alderwar yeah. is out soon so i'm just saying let's not do that again shall we yeah if we the split the community close more or less in february then we have some beta or ptr or whatever it is for the next season start this is also when it comes to like wrath of the lich king classic like the release uh, is so close like with dragonflight right so a lot of people are coming back to retail wow to have a look at dragonflight and this like we saw that this lowered the population of wrath of the lich king like imagine like one game comes out and some some weeks later the other one right so those people like only a portion will stay in the older in the older version right so i had this too with my guild so i joined a guild like i made a death knight in uh, wrath of the Lich King classic i was like leveling this one up and i joined a guild and like when it first came out like the first especially two three weeks like there were so many people online then at some point dragonflight came out and like half of my guild at least quit the game and they moved over to retail and now when i come online like oh 10 people online or something sometimes if i'm lucky 20 but there used to be literally 30 40 people online at a time minimum and now it's down to like 10 people or so at a time in the afternoon here in uh, middle european uh, central european time so yeah i already see how people are like moving away and they're moving to retail if if, if there's in the future another wow classic and this one is not called uh wow classic wrath of the lich king classic plus but let's say wow cataclysm classic or something right like cataclysm would be the next expansion and then what happens we have one server uh wow vanilla classic we have uh wow wrath of the lich king classic and then we have wow cataclysm uh, classic we have uh like what comes next then at some point we get like uh, Mists of Pandaria classic like then you have like four or five versions of the game but you don't get like so many new players that uh, play WoW in general right so what happens is you're losing a percentage of your player base from from one version of the game so each time a new version comes out 30 40 percent quit the previous one and move to the new one like permanently I mean like temporary we all check stuff out right but people that get dedicated like there would be a high percentage leaving wrath of the lich king classic to go to cataclysm i'm 100 percent positive about that and this is why i'm saying i don't have a good view on the future and a good feeling about the future of wow classic as a whole because if you re release if you re-release a game that has been out for like so many years just so people get like an earlier version several expansions or patches ago you forget that the technology is advancing that there are like new retail expansions coming out and if you keep releasing new new classic phases you split the community more or you frustrate them if you if you close one like there may be now some people that are actually frustrated and i've read this in forums because there's no more tbc classic right so we have now just two classics but what will happen with wrath of the lich king classic in the future because there are a lot of people that didn't like the cataclysm changes so how are they gonna do that we're gonna have three versions of the game now four versions five yeah i don't think it's looking too good for 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 the classic games the population will drop even further in march you could expect an april may perhaps early summer release for the next seasonal server that would be my guess anyway i also think you can get away with launching around trial of the crusader as well just because it's quite a short raid as for what season two may be i couldn't really guess if i'm honest players want so many different varying things and i think ideally you only want to be experimenting with one of those things at once to give it the best chance at seeing a solid player base yeah but the most popular demands are in no particular order a fresh no changes 2019 release aka world of warrior craft a seasonal server with class oh, changes and rebalancing additional content added to the game or some kind of notion of classic plus or servers where players can take on the hardcore challenge more on that in a moment either way the demand is growing people are driving hype so watch the seasonal space if you're interested next for classic is classic era classic era servers were created when originally the game moved from vanilla classic into tbc 
They are non-progressive realms frozen on Phase 6 content, meaning everything up to and including Naxxramas is out and there is not going to be anything new released. The purpose of these servers was to create a place for classic enjoyers to go back to as TBC came out. And you can find these servers on a drop down on your Battle.net launcher on either mm -hmm. the standard version of WoW or on the classic ones. When Classic Era originally dropped, you could pay to have your character cloned to exist on both the live version of the classic game as well as Era. I didn't like that. Unfortunately, it. this service was discontinued last summer and it looks as though- You know why I don't like that? Because you're forced to pay to do that. Like what is with some people really love the version of this uh, one more like why why can't we get this for free why must we pay for this it's kind of like you know what we're adding something new if you want to stick to something old i'm sorry you have to pay for it or something like that i i don't like this kind of way they they are thinking and how they did this uh, i i was not happy when i heard this well as error unfortunately this service was discontinued last summer and it looks as though clones have been wiped from the game so if you want to play error nowadays you're gonna have to start fresh did they get a refund no experience buffs on a fully progressed server which sounds like a pretty tough sell for most people, right? Well, despite the adversity, people have been coming back to Era, and there's definitely been a buzz in the community to create content on these servers too. Imagine Chief among which has been the Hardcore Challenge. The idea behind this has been something since Vanilla Classic back in 2019, and the same community of players successfully led an initiative during the Season of Mastery to defeat Ragnaros with an entire raid group of players who had never died. And with Season of Mastery winding down, the interest oh, is growing wow. for this playstyle. Blizzard have shown it some interest in the past too, awarding special achievements for example. The basics of it are leveling a character to 60 solo without dying or trading. There are tons of yeah. additional rules that you can easier. follow for a greater challenge, such as being a fully self-sufficient character, only using gear you make, or restricting yourself to a certain spell school. There's also a special add-on that monitors activity to make sure there's no foul play, as well as announcing deaths in guild chats whenever they happen, which they do a no. lot. I think part of taking on the challenge and then immediately looking for loopholes though is kind of missing the point of what it's about in the first place. It's more of a for fun thing to do to give some life to classic servers and try and indicate to Blizzard what the player base would like. If this sounds interesting to you, the places to play are Bloodsail Buccaneers on North America and Hydraxian Waterlords on Europe. For regular play on Classic Era, servers have also been connected some time ago, as in now you will see people from your server's cluster instead of just your own. These are as follows, as you can see on screen here, across Europe and North America. This kind of had to happen to bolster the smaller player base at the time, and was an alternative solution to consolidating realms as they did on Wrath. As for yeah. where to play on Europe, the most active PvE servers are- Yeah, I think this is what I said, this is good. Like, it is good to connect them. Like, this needs to be done if there's no population, because if you log in and you want to do dungeons, or you want to go for some PvP or something, you need people for this. If you don't have people, like, what's the point even logging in? Like, you're just gonna be AFK in zone chat spamming anyone online anyone wants to group with me like this is so annoying like i hate doing this like i don't have anyone the guild online they have to ask randoms i need to spam zone chat to find people to, to just do one dungeon and this dungeon doesn't even take that long probably so ah uh, so yeah merging this is i think this was really necessary here so i think they did good with this this was the right choice a smaller player base at the time and was an alternative solution to consolidating realms as they did on wrath as for where to play on europe the most active pve servers are on the pyrewood yeah, village pyrewood cluster village and for pvp big. firemore but north for america sure. i believe you might want to check in the comments on this one but the most active pve cluster is mancrick and pvp is white main so that's classic for you definitely a smaller player base but a more tight-knit one and one that's been gradually growing too finally dragonflight more than just a honeymoon Moon. Well, certainly seems that way as we currently are. Yes. Good content, solid story, wonderful open world. Dragon riding has been a big hit for me personally, and a lack of chalk. I, I moved from classic to the yeah, latest yeah. expansion up to already being a hit in the minds of many. And I'm going to go on a bit of a side rant about this whole honeymoon phase thing and only enjoying things for a short amount of time. This is me right here. So I was. Uh I was not so happy with like Shadowlands, so I moved to WoW Wrath of the Lich King Classic. I was like really enjoying my Death Knight. I was enjoying the, the pre-patch, like before the release came of, of uh, Wrath of the Lich King Classic. I was like leveling through to TBC and all that. Uh, it was such a good time for me, but 
when Dragonflight came out and I saw the new zone, I was like questing and, and just checking it out a little bit. I started loving it. Like I'm now just playing retail WoW currently. I'm not even, yeah, I'm sort of like still logging in to see like how like my guild mates and like people I met in WoW Classic are doing. But currently I'm so busy with like Dragonflight. I don't even get to play Classic at all. And I feel like a lot of people uh, are like this. This is why I said earlier from my 30, 40 guild members ac online at a time, there's just like, like 10 now in Wrath of Lich King Classic. And that's because they all just like me moved to Dragonflight. That's why I also think the future is not looking too bright for WoW Classic. Because if retail keeps releasing good expansions and good patches, then there's no point to go back to the older version of WoW if you can play the more modern version, right? Expansion up to already being a hit in the minds of many. True. And I'm going to go on a bit of a side rant about this whole honeymoon phase thing and only enjoying things Trek for a short so amount nice. of time. If you never did anything because you might not like it, eventually you would never do anything. If people have fun for a few weeks, and good for them. Can we just start with the whole you'll be miserable eventually kind of thing? You never had a new takeout place or a TV series or a band that you obsess over, but then you get bored of it after a while. Do you regret going to that place, listening to them or whatever it may be because you didn't like it as much? one month later people are out there being mad because they see somebody else liking something and can't understand why it's just not a great mindset anyways no, ramp on cooldowns let's get back toxicity. to it blizzard also released a content roadmap for the latest expansion is this the first time they've released so much that right here is the same like waiting for christmas like they make you happy because they know you're getting something nice like i think this was brilliant by blizzard to release this roadmap because this actually is what makes people not quit the game because they are very hyped for what this mega dungeon here could be. What kind of world events are coming. And here, content and system updates. Are they going to rework like the old zones? Is the starting experience going to be better? Is it worth grinding up a new alt with like a whole new uh, early game experience? Or here, story and quests. What's coming next? Will there be a new evil person that we have to stop? Will be some, some giant dragon? Will maybe, I don't know, Anduin return? Like, what is happening here? And, and this is like why people will not stop anytime soon as well. The zones look bright and colorful. What has a psychological effect uh, with Dragonflight on the people. So they get like a positive feeling from questing and grinding there. Because it looks like in so, some, some fairy tale universe or something, right? We have like those, those grass fields, those beautiful mountains. You're like flying some cool looking dragon around with like high speed. So yeah, people are going to stay for sure. This is not good for WoW Classic, but it's good for WoW as, as a whole information about oh, yeah. what's planned for the future i can't think of one from the past if i'm honest this is outlining roughly what their plans are for 10.1 and 10.2 not let us start with this. items that's going to open up a lot more low fantasy transmogs i bet orc and human heritage armor ui improvements oh, I will grind professional for that. updates a mega dungeon and your standard <laughs> new zone raid and pvp seasons all subject to timing changes feedback of course but hey there <laughs> it is some me. form of commitment to the next entire year of retail World of Warcraft. When does that ever happen? Let's just hope Blizzard are able to deliver on this pretty content heavy schedule. I think Their impressions they see success and they keep doing to it. Shadowlands or BFA so far though have been much improved. A lot more freedom in terms of you telling the game what to do instead of the other way around. Much more class-wide customization in terms of the updated talent trees, professions allowing your character to feel specialized into a niche rather than get to X level for Y bonus and then ignore it, and leveling alts as well as the alt experience in Dragonflight is so much more more friendly than it's been for years so it's a lot of fun as always we'll see how it continues going but it looks to be positive as for me personally i expect to play dragonflight casually as the major content patches drop i'll be putting most of my time into Ordoir and wrath classic on my two characters which is my warlock main and my hunter alt i am very interested in seasonal world of warcraft servers making a return and i want to see what blizzard decide to do with them i'm more on the do loads of changes stuff side of the fence but i think it's very important they get the timing right and coinciding with the release of Alduar just isn't the time to be doing it. Classic era and the hardcore challenge is very appealing to me too. I've always been a fan of leveling in classic. Mm -hmm. I did 10 characters to 60 drawing vanilla classic. The only problem is I know all too well how long that journey takes. So yes. It's kind of just a maybe for me at this point it's in very time. Slow. Oh and finally if you were maybe thinking but what about after Wrath? Well we don't have any news yet and we won't have for some time I expect. I think it will be I think they will make a Cataclysm Classic and I tell you guys why and that's just logical. If you are 
like already dried out with content and you have released every single phase there could be every single dungeon you have added some new stuff maybe you added some cool events and stuff at some point you as a company you will run out of content for your latest uh version and since this is an mmo like mmos there's something unique about mmos and we see this mmos they require updates and new content to stay relevant because the way MMOs work is like people, not only do they invest like a lot of time and they explore everything, do every quest, every this and that. But if you don't get like the hype going, people are going to leave the game and people don't play them because there are less people. So it's like a chain reaction, right? If you see like a negative trend in an MMO, this will get like even more people to quit and then the game dies. Cataclysm, and I imagine so I'll be making they videos require content talking about updates. that a lot more as we get closer to it being a possibility. But that is all from me today. That's classic and a little on retail in a mm -hmm. nutshell heading into 2023. Let me know which version of World of Warcraft you're on and what is interesting for, me, you most for the future. And if you like the content, drop a like, it helps me out. As always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one very soon. Yeah, I don't think it's looking too good for WoW Classic. There's like one way to save WoW Classic, but this is something that also some people are not going to like. We need a World of Warcraft 2 that is World of Warcraft 2, but like Classic. Like, what if we get like a new engine, everything new, modernized, but only the zones, buses, dungeons, raids, and zone from WoW Classic and the same story? Like a World of Warcraft remastered. And like the graphic is way better than in retail and like the combat is more modern and this and that. Yeah, it kills the purpose. Now some people are going to be like, well, wait a second, people play WoW Classic because it was so simple and, and so old school, right? So yeah, it kills the, the purpose of Classic, but, but do we need a WoW Classic? Why don't we just get a WoW number two, like World of Warcraft 2? And it can be about the story and, and raids and all that stuff of WoW Classic, but everything reworked with like super HD textures and the character models look freaking realistic. Like you can maybe wear some freaking 3D glasses and everything is 3D in game or so. Like let's get some, some modern stuff, please, okay? Like that would be actually really nice. And not just be stuck on like sweet old memories because the sweet old memories we have, let's be realistic, our children and their children are not going to share those. Like we need games for also the future generations and we can't expect them to play something that we played as teenagers. Like what WoW really needs to do, and this is my advice I have to give to Blizzard if they are somehow watching here and watching this video. Like blizzard needs to pull in more younger players that are like 18 19 20 years old and that didn't grow up with world of warcraft like our generation did like people yeah born in the 90s they most likely grew up with it right unless they didn't play video games when they were younger who knows but everyone that was into video gaming they knew about warcraft 3 about world of warcraft if you were born in the 90s right but for what about those that are born like 2020, uh, 2000, in 2000, right? Like those people that are now, let's say, 23, 24. They didn't, they didn't grow up with like World of Warcraft. They were like still in their diapers and stuff when the game dropped. So, so it's, I think, important to at some point get a World of Warcraft 2 and to get more younger players involved with World of Warcraft. Because we, uh, one day... Are only going to see like all old, old, older players play World of Warcraft, and then the game will be dead. Like seriously, we need to get more younger players. Like for sure, those 10, 20 plus years younger than us. But yeah, guys, that's my view on World of Warcraft Classic. I think Blizzard needs to stop splitting the community and making multiple versions of WoW Classic that you can play on at a time. I'm actually happy that there's no WoW TBC Classic and there's just WoW Classic and WoW Wrath of the Lich King Classic. But once the content dries up and they have to add new content and they need to add something like WoW Cataclysm Classic and then people are frustrated, they want then three versions of Classic. I think this will be the time when Classic will die. But yeah, let's see, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because Classic is still fun, but let's see. And yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I wish everyone a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.